Hey, everybody, this is Joe from the band Hailstorm. Um, we are coming down to Australia, play some Knot Fest, and we cannot wait to get there. What's up, Good. Chris? Hey, Joe, how's things, things, brother? Thanks for joining us today. No, you kidding? Thanks for having me. No worries at all. So, as you say, man, Hailstorm returned to Australia um, just a few short weeks, mate, as part of Knot Fest, with shows starting in Melbourne on March 21st, hitting Sydney on the 23rd, and Brisbane on the 24th. So, are you packed and ready to go, mate? Are you that sort of person, or are you going to leave it till the last minute? I'm usually a last minute guy, but I have gotten like ninety percent of my pack together. I'm, you know, yeah. I uh, I have some things I'm struggling with. I got the clothes all together. It's I, I'm a photographer too, so I'm like, what cameras? I don't want to bring an extra suitcase, so I'm trying yeah. to shove in as much shit as I can without overdoing it. And I'm struggling in that department right now. I don't know what lenses to bring. I'm struggling. <laughs> cool. And Knotfest also features uh, Pantera, Lamb of God, Disturbed, Skindred, just to name a few, mate. So who have you played with most out of that lineup? Um, Disturbed, for sure. Yeah. We we toured with them in, when did we tour with them? In like 2010, maybe. And I think we toured with them again. And then I can't even remember. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, we've just known them forever. I feel like they're, you know, uh, and every time we're in town and they come through and play, we'll hop back and say hi to them and have a few beers. Uh, so yeah, we're I'm excited to see them. I haven't seen those boys in quite a few years. Yeah, cool. And there's also a few Australian bands on the lineup, including King Parrot, uh, Windmaker, and Die Out Is Murder, mate. So do you know much about the Aussie bands? Not too much, honestly. Um, I, I, thy art is murder is playing. I just heard, I saw a headline today that their ex singer now does real estate. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but, uh, <laughs> and I don't know why it's a headline, honestly. <laughs> wow. But cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't go into that. I think there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's okay. Story I figured for, story for that, that was a headline. Day. <laughs> now you guys were only out here last year i think so um what what's changed with hailstorm since the last visit um man i feel like we're and I, i'm not you know i i suppose you could say this anytime but i feel like we're a new band after uh we, we did those shows last year last january and after you know we after that we went and did some like u.s military base things and got home from that whole run of touring and kind of like had a powwow and we're like, all right, what are we doing? You know, like kind of had to kind of rethought our whole purpose, you know? And, and honestly, like I made like a playlist of the music we were listening to when the, when the four of us first started playing together back in 2003, 2004. And we we're listening to that, listen, looking at old set lists from back 20 years ago. And like, why, why did we do, why, why, why was it that people started coming out to our shows? Why did we get signed? What was the, you know, like trying to get back into this kind of headspace. And, uh, and I think we did. And we spent like two or three months before the June European festival run. That was like kind of our next real tour. Um, we were working on new music, but we were also, uh, we spent the majority of the time just restructuring our live set and our, and our goals, you know, like, and, 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 I say this word way too much, but it really came down, it comes down to moments. And that's why we love what we do. That's why we love music is when you sit there and you create these moments together, that makes a crowd go, woo, you know, like that's, that's the currency is the woo. And uh, <laughs> we just kind of rewrote how we looked at some songs, kind of wove some together and try and tried, you know, we're trying to be more dynamic and, we don't use computers or click tracks or anything. So it's just the four of us making noise up there and what you hear is what you get, you know, mistakes and all. And, and, um, I, I, we, we try to do a lot of, a lot of improv, like not like jam band improv, but just Im improv, like where we, we know, all right, this section, I don't know where it's going to go and I don't know where it's going to land, but, uh, let's just figure it out together. And, and to me, that's, that's my favorite part of music is, it's jumping off a cliff. It's living right here in, in, in the present, you know, and in front of a few thousand people and you're doing it together. Like it's different every night because the energy from the crowd is different. The energy of the four of us on stage are different and we're listening to each other and, and trying to make this moment happen, you know? And, uh, 
we kind of like went back to basics and what we loved about it all and rewrote our set and we're coming. So we're coming down there with like a whole new set and a whole new kind of mindset and attitude. And, and it's exciting because it kind of pumps some fresh blood into us and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's why we love doing this. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Almost <laughs> forgot there for a second. Almost forgot. But... <laughs> Cause uh, along those lines, bro, like you've played a lot of shows over the years. So is there, is there anything, I guess, from a crowd perspective that, they can do to make your show a lot better. You don't make you come off and go, fuck, that was something special. You know, it's about, I think, uh, just like us, I think, I mean, I've had my best times in the crowd watching my favorite bands when I completely lose my mind, which is exactly how I feel when, you know, you're doing a solo or, or in, in that present performing and like being totally present, you know, and, I, I try to do that when I see bands, you know, I might take a picture at the beginning of the show or something. So I remember it and it's in my folder, but after that, it's just like, you know, cover me with your sound, you know, let's, let's groove here. You know, you, 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 you let the vibrations flow through you and you get, you get present. And when, when a crowd is like that, when the crowd is there and the majority of them are there, there, you know, you can we can feel that we know exactly what they're going through because we're going through the same thing and you kind of connect wavelengths and that's when the real magic happens at a live show you know yeah that's cool now i was at your album show when you were out here last year and there's one particular moment in it made like you guys all fucked off on left stage and lizzie was out there by herself with a piano and singing yeah. and i like, even talking about it now man like i get goosebumps like that it was that was something beautiful man like that how do you guys feel backstage just checking that out oh you mean during the miller light halftime show yeah uh, <laughs> no we i we i don't like usually it i grab a beer and run over by josh and rj and they have a beer or whatever they're having that night and we're like oh my god can you believe what that did you see that person and we've heard her sing a million times so <laughs> we, don't, we don't necessarily tune in <laughs> um you know because we're we're next to her most times I love watching her sing. I I've been in the crowd when she's sang with other bands or done a solo thing. And it like, like you said, I've gotten chills. I've watched, she sang at the country music awards like 10 years ago, maybe now with Eric church. He asked her to come up and she was like, yeah, I'll go up. And I was out in the crowd watching that. And we we're at Bridgestone arena here in Nashville. And she got into like the bridge section or whatever. And just kind of went off and did the thing that she does. Apparently she does that all the time next to me. I don't know. I'm just trying <laughs> not to fuck up. But uh, I like, I got like, I had like chills went through me and I looked at the crowd all the way, all the way up to the top row in the balcony. And you saw, I saw the wave of chills at everybody and it like melted my brain. I was like, Holy shit. She just did that. Sick. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> so I know what you're talking about. Cause I've experienced that from her before, but yeah, when, when we're in the middle of a show, I'm not, I, I'll watch some, you know, but I'm usually running back and talking with the boys or having a beer, talking to my guitar tech and, getting ready for the next song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you guys have got a couple of your own side shows here too with Skindred and Relic uh, in Sydney on March 20th and Brisbane March 26th. So how, how different are those shows going to be to, to the Not Fair shows? Um, well, we got like at least 30 minutes more time. So uh, we're going to, we have a few anchors in our set. We call them, you know, just things that, songs that we've worked together and things that, that we'll do that might be a little similar, but otherwise after that, you know, it's, we'll, we'll switch it up. Every, every show is going to have a few different songs and um, yeah, we do. We always do that. We always change the set list and we have to, otherwise we get bored. Like we can't, yeah. once we start getting bored, like it's like, all right, look out everybody. <laughs> like that's some fun. And <laughs> we're trying to have fun. Day. <laughs> yeah. We, we're there to have fun, not, not be bored on stage. <laughs> So from a personal perspective, mate, what would you rather play, the, the festival shows or the or the headline shows? Oh, I think you can't appreciate one without the other, you know? Like Everybody. the festivals are amazing, but it's always kind of a rush. And sometimes the crowd, like we oh, we were in front of Metallica Download in the UK last year. Awesome. 90, 100,000 people in front of you, but like they have their snake pit <laughs> and there's like, 
I can barely see the front row, you know, other than the hundred people in the snake pit. Yeah, you know, cool. Right. But like the front row that goes around the stage, I, I was like, where I can't even you can't even like make a connection. But there's also like a hundred thousand people behind them. Yeah, and that's right. kind of mind melting. And then to go from there to like a you know, a theater club or a small arena show or something that people are a headline show and they're there for you, that's that is also the best feeling, but in a totally different way. Cause, cause there you're connecting with, you're not like selling yourself. You are and always, but like, you're not like, Hey, check me out. You're like, let's get together. Let's you like, I was talking earlier, let's connect wavelengths. Let's make some moments happen to get, you know, cause it takes the crowd to really pull it out of you, you know? Yeah. So I can't, you know, I think they're equal and opposite and you need both to really appreciate them. Yeah, diplomatic answer, Beckle. <laughs> <laughs> now, your most recent album was Back from the Dead, which came out in the middle of last year. So, how'd that go down, mate? Like, personally, I think it was one of the albums of the year. But how how was the fan reception? Oh, you're sweet. Um, I think it went well. I people seem to like it. I don't know. We, you know, we did it. We put it out, and then we toured on it, which is what we do when we <laughs> make a record. And no, I I think it went great. Um, the record was it was kind of an experiment for us, you know, like coming out of that pandemic and we basically wrote two or three albums worth of material. And that was the one that came out. So it it's great. I, I love it all. I'm just happy to be here. You know, I get Thank to play you. music. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, of course, when you toured on that album, you had to play a fair bit of it in, in the live set, but now the dust is settled on it and you're out on another tour. How much of that album's stayed in the set? There's a few songs, um, but yeah, we, uh, so, you know, we definitely like, like we're pull, we're gonna pull back to, from like 2005 from when we first got together, and we're gonna pull from the first, you know, all the records now. So it's uh yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm always glad once we get you know once we like tour on a record for like a year or so, and then to me then it's like all right, time to like we really got to switch it up. We don't have to play so many new songs. Let's yeah. get back to some of the old ones and relook at some old ones and see if we can do them in a different way, you know, some fresh perspective or something, you know? Now, I know it's, it's not long after that album coming up, but you brought it up yourself before, so I reckon that means I'm allowed to ask you. <laughs> so, Beck, have you started writing some new music already? Oh, yeah, we got a... We've been in the studio. We were in the studio last fall for three weeks, just writing and recording. We'd write, wake up, have some breakfast, start writing. And then once we kind of captured at least the essence of the song and some sort of arrangement, we'd start recording it. And um, so we got a bunch of new songs. Um, really, you know, they're not done yet, but they're not like polished up, but the basics are there. And, um, you know, that's exciting. I don't know if it's going to be the record. I don't know if any of them are going to be on the next record. <laughs> it was kind of, it was, it was a bit of an experiment, but uh, we're going to get back at it soon and do kind of the same thing. But this time we got a bunch of songs written. So we're going to get in there and start taking it from demo to recording instead of just writing and recording. This time we're going to take finished songs and really finish them, you know? Um, so we'll see. It'd be awesome. Man, I would be so pumped if we could not knock out a record in April. April and May we'll be back in the studio, but uh we'll see. We're not you know, we're not in too much of a rush. We got this this tour and then a summer tour and a bunch of fall shows and stuff, but uh after that we'll be if we don't finish it, we'll have time. So I ain't scared. Uh, all right, Joe. Well, thanks very much for your time, bro. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you, mate. How storm are here? But not fest over March 21, 23, and 24 with their own sideshow. So we'll catch you on the flip side. Hell yeah. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you, man. No worries, brother. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Get some rest. <laughs>